Yes, ma'am. Can you start, sir? Yes, ma'am. Start, ma'am. We can start, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening and welcome to the day two of the five-day online international faculty development program organized by Niasi Institute of Information Technology. Today's topic, how to prepare for Industry 4.0 world. A little bit introduction about Miyasi Institute of Information Technology. Miyasi Institute of Information Technology is situated in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. It was established in 2002. It is accredited from AICTE and it is affiliated to the University of Madras. Miyasi Institute of Information Technology is an independent standalone institution offering MCA program exclusively. Miyasi Institute of Information Technology is a co-educational institution and has 120 students in each batch studying in MCA. That's about Miyasi Institute of Information Technology <coughs> in, a, in a nutshell. Without further ado, let's begin the program. A great saying goes by this. A healthy inside is a, is a start for a happy outside. To have a holistic beginning, I request Mr. Mohammed Gauss, Assistant Professor, Miyasi Institute of Information Technology, to recite the prayer. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Li'ila fi Quraysh. إيلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم خوف صدق الله العظيم Thank you ma'am Thank you sir I now request Mr. Mohammad Ajwad, Assistant Professor, Miyasi Institute of Information Technology, to welcome the gathering and introduce the resource person to us. Good evening to all. So, first of all, I welcome to this five days online international education program. And today is the Ajwad, sir, it's not audible. We cannot hear you, Ajwad. We sir. cannot hear you, Ajwad, sir. Not audible, ma'am. Uh, now it's audible. Yes, now yes, it's, yes, sir. Yeah. So, sorry, sorry for this. So today, I am welcome to all regarding this uh, five-day online FTP. That is international FTP. Today is a day two. Today's topic is how to prepare for industrial 4.0 world. So today, our resource person, uh, Mr. Muhammad Ilyas, is a trainer and a developer. And he has completed uh, his uh, B electronic and electrical engineer electronic and communications. And after finishing this uh, B, he has, he has joined as an embedded engineer in uh, simple labs. And he also made a number of training in embedded automation projects and trained people in embedded systems and made research and product developments. So side by is it he also completed ME elect metro electronics engineering. After finishing that, he has uh, found he has started a, a company called AltSense Technology uh, Services Private Limited. As he has uh, act, uh, he has a founder and a CEO of the company, and he has trained uh, more than twenty five students based on this company, and also as a chief trainer, and more than three thousand hours has been uh, made for this training for the students. After that, he also made a Another IT expert company is CEO of IT experts. Now he is making about managing an e-learning platform for a number of students. So here also we have about a specialization about him is he is about IoT automated training. He's doing IT automated training and the robotics training and developments and the Python hardware training, as well as the computer version training and industrial automations and WordPress website developments. So very happy to welcome you, sir. And also, I welcome all the participants of this program for the day two. I welcome you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving a lot of information about our speaker and for a very hearty welcome. We will move on to the session. Over to you, Ilyas, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. And thank you, ma'am, for introducing. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, hope you're all fine. So. 
so i i heard, i think you're all in mute mode so if you have anything to say you have the chat box always open so be uh, be attentive and also you know you know you're, you're always open to ask anything in the mic okay and uh, this will be more like uh, an interactive session uh, it's not like i don't want to just speak and you want i want i don't want you to least just listen to me so and it's all about industry 4.0 okay generally when generally i speak to stu students about it uh, i ask a lot of questions and then start uh, but now we have very limited time so we have just one half right so i'll just go through uh, and then we'll have all the questions in the end and maybe we can go through that and shall we start yeah i hope we can start now right yeah, yeah okay so you all can see the screen the screen is visible right right uh, is the screen visible to everyone Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, yes. Fine. So just, just for confirmation. So prepare yourself for Industry 4.0 or 4.0. Now, okay. Before getting into uh, what is preparation and all, basically preparation is all about knowing about it. And then, uh, when when I say preparation, uh, the preparation steps are really less or it's simple, but knowing about it matters a lot. Okay. Uh, only after that, that is what is preparation is all about. First of all, okay. So we'll go through uh, very. Uh, I mean, we we'll go through all of those technologies very. Uh, I mean, briefly, and then I'll say I'll give you a very simple step on how to prepare for that. Okay, that's what this uh, session is all about. Okay, yeah. And by the way, to begin before I start this, let me ask, start with a simple question. So, I mean, sorry, one second. Uh, is it presentable? One second, people. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. One second. Okay, one second, one second. Sure. Yeah. Send. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so now it should be fine. So we'll start with a very basic question. So what is industrial revolution? What do you think it is? Because that's where it started. So we'll start with a very basic question. What do you think is industrial revolution? Uh, you can just use the chat box. Uh, okay. Yep. Hmm? What do you think is industrial revolution? I, most of you might be knowing it since you're all professors and teachers. Uh, this is just to, you know, I ask questions just to make sure, uh, you know, because only we get responses, you know, it'll be really interactive. That's why. So industrial revolution, uh, we know about it. Exactly. So changes and innovation in industries. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is someone saying anything? I mean, okay. See, generally, generally, uh, generally changes happen in human history that takes humans to next level. Yeah, technology-wise changes, exactly. So basically what happens is when, when, there, when there is some sort of invention, okay, humans advance to next level, okay? And it can be in terms of uh, how the human life is, or in terms of GDP, in the, I mean, in terms of financial growth, or in terms of how civilized they get into. Okay, generally, any invention takes them, to, takes humans to the next level. So, if you start from the very beginning, like invention of fire and wheel, both of them have a great impact on how it took them to the next level, right? Before fire, before invention of fire, there was no uh, cooking and all. So after invention of fire, cooking started, people started heating, I mean, water, hygiene, hygienic way of living started. And if you take invention of wheel, transportation is really less, you know, before that. But after that, transportation started, uh, goods were easily able to move from one place to other place. So, so that increase in farmers. Okay. So that is what changes do to humans is to humans life. It, it enhances their life basically. Now, when it comes to industries, uh, industries were very prevalent during this uh, medieval age. You know what medieval age, right? Uh, especially in Europe, uh, when when the time no, was like, no. yeah, 
around 1400s and all uh, hindus is very very prevalent that time uh, yes okay that time a very a very interesting invention a very interesting invention took them yeah took them to the next level what is the invention that happened around 1700s you see this graph here you see this graph here now this graph yeah this graph actually tells you uh, gives you an insight about how the gdp of each and every country increased rapidly after some invention in 1800s there was some invention again in 1850s there was some invention in 1950s there was some invention so all these inventions increased humans level of production and manufacturing and all that so what did they happen in 1800s what was the major invention uh, i mean which took humans in, in terms of next level and increase in gdp and all that what was the what is the main invention that it, it was called industrial revolution basically what what was it so what what is the main uh, criteria or the driving force behind industries blooming actually before like 300 years back or 200 years back what is the Come on. You get my question. You get my question. The question is, what is the driving factor which which uh, increase industries in terms of I mean GDP and all that? You can see here all the countries GDP has increased drastically. Something has happened that time. What is that? Any anyone? What what is the what is the use of which technology? We can call it technology again again. usage of what uh, i mean for example is you have seen locomotives right trains and all you were operated using what that time locomotives especially what is used to look to operate trains and all now we have electric trains and all that so what was before that yes okay uh, is anyone answering okay so let me let me let me answer myself then so uh the answer is steam power okay steam power steam power uh, i mean in the coal coal was highly used and steam power is driving force like internet came along 1950s okay but before that we had steam power and then after we had electricity okay and then we had computers and internet if you, if you just go through this you see this three i mean let me show you The next next uh, picture you see this you see this uh, we are currently in industry 4.0 right so before that we had three industrial revolution we had three first one was steam based machines so they were used for uh, textile looms okay locomotives and all that so they powered it was a technology basically okay that time yeah and then we had electrical uh, thing electricity was invented in 1850s okay so that drove uh, again industries to the next level okay before electricity people don't used to work in the night okay night work was not there industries were used to be closed at night but after electricity bulbs are interest i mean inventor and all that so we had power even at night and industries were working even at night after that so the production doubled manufacturing doubled obviously there is growth in all sorts of uh, factors and then our 1950s we had uh, computers coming up okay so computers pushed automation computers introduced automation so everything which was actually human manual were converted into automated mode example for example you you would have seen uh, car manufacturing industries using robotics uh, robotic arms to build you know the car parts and all that you would have seen that right so all that started when computers came into play so basically these three revolutions okay were the, were before this and in some way they have pushed humans to the next level and now we are using it basically okay computers and internet you know how things are connected now and how we are using it at the current one okay uh, the everyone is speaking about or everyone wants to uh, bring into the whole world is industry 4.0 what do you think industry 4.0 concentrates on Uh, uh iot is one of the technologies but what is the main motive behind industry 
what do you want to achieve with industry 5.0 what do you think we want to achieve uh yeah okay connecting together to produce more product okay robotics okay robotics iot all those are uh, technologies of industry 5.0 at the end of the day what do you want to achieve with all these technologies iot or robotics uh, what what is it we uh, want to achieve or what is it uh, uh, what is the what is the talk of the town now what do you all speak about now in this era Uh, a main a main word i'm expecting I mean uh, a very important word everyone is speaking about and everyone wants to get into what is it exactly exactly ai okay artificial intelligence so that's industry 4.0 is all about ai okay industrial revolution 4 is all about artificial intelligence okay yeah so we had computers in the internet before that but ai was not there it was in very uh, basic level now we have a connected world okay we have a connected everything is connected okay uh, even even a watches are connected now okay in 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 some place we have even a clothes connected so all those are connected with connectivity we get intelligence okay with connectivity we get intelligence now that is what is driving the whole world now okay is driving the whole world now. for example for example let me take okay we are all sitting in the chairs now right we are sitting in chairs now. now these chairs they have they don't have intelligence do they have intelligence or let's say i i use my mic i have a mic now this mic doesn't have intelligence now how are we how are we going to give intelligence to them how are we going to give intelligence to them how can they get intelligence let, let's take the chair example how can the chairs get example Uh, get intelligence how can the chair you are sitting on or the mic i'm using now can get intelligence let's say okay let's say i have the mic i i want this mic to block the bad words let's say okay I generally use this uh, example everywhere i i want this mic to block the bad words alone not the good words i want it to filter out all the bad words uh, of course we use programming but uh uh coding yeah how does it get intelligence okay let let me go through okay yeah let me go through this one by one okay let me go through the steps one by one first of all this mic it it listens to me plainly isn't it it does it listens to everything i say it doesn't think basically right now what i can do i can put a uh, a uh, uh, a voice recognizer you know what's a voice recognizer right we have in mobile phone which converts what are you speak into text right you speak what are you speak it converts that into text for example if i say hello the hello will be converted into text so we can put that sort of chip inside my mic now and then this mic can convert what i am saying after converting the mic should know whether that particular word is good or bad how can the mic know whether a word is good or bad you can make question how can a mic know whether a, ba- a word is a good or bad word this is a, this is a very important question basically this this answers uh, how can it filter how can it filter how can it know for example if the word is hello if the word is hello how can the mic know this word hello is not a bad word now of course we are going to train uh, yeah matching with what matching with what matching with what patterns uh, keep it simple keep it simple i i just want simple answer okay what words what words compare with what words bad words right let me keep it simple bad words first of all first of all yeah exactly previous data first of all i should take all the bad words in the world and store in some sort of a server a database you get my point okay i should take all the bad words and store in a server in a database now this mic can get can access the database <clears throat> and compare compare this hello with the database <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> excuse me one second <clears throat> so this this mic can have access to the database and get to know whether this word is this word hello is a bad or bad or not 
how can it know if the word is in the database data say database it's a bad word right let's say if there's some some bad word is coming it'll compare with the database if it is there obviously it's a bad word now 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 just think about this in a simple manner now think in simple manner this mic was not thinking before it was not thinking before it doesn't didn't have any intelligence but now after giving it some sort of database and some connectivity okay note the point some connectivity because it needs connect it needs internet access to get the database so some connectivity and some data gives the mic the ability to think and take decision so do you understand do you understand how we give intelligence to things now so it things get intelligence because of connectivity okay connected where you can see here okay intelligence ai big data iot cloud all these speak about connectivity okay so we are speaking about a world which we can call industry 4.0 world where everything will be speaking to each other speaking to us for example the chair you are sitting on okay it doesn't have intelligence it don't have intelligence but let's say i connect the chair to the cloud to the internet and let's say i put some weight sensor okay let's say i put weight sensor in the chair and it it's connected to the cloud now the chair the chair can speak to you the, the chair can say celia's you are weighing more than 100 kg i can bear only 100 kg please get up you get the point the chair can send you a message can 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 send you a message now can answer you can talk to you saying i can bear only this much so so industry 4.0 okay the the technologies we are using for it are all concentrated on on giving intelligence to the things around us okay the systems around us everything we are looking at in front of us it can be a, your your anything it can be a chair or table a watch or light a pen everything will be having some sort of intelligence when this whole thing is applied okay and this intelligence is not just given by one technology okay it it is given by a combination of many technologies that's what we call as industry 4.0 technologies okay not everything get concentrated i mean uh, uh, you know participate but we have a set of technologies which are concentrated on this shall we go through that very briefly uh, you get what iit i mean this 4.0 was and what we are targeted on uh, you get the point right everyone i hope you get the point so so industry 4.0 is all about giving intelligence to the things around us right okay now next thing which are the technologies we are looking at now uh, what i what i'm showing here is only a few of them okay uh, there are certain things missing here anyways we'll go through uh, one by one not everything uh, very important ones briefly okay not not deeply Uh, for example if you speak with autonomous robots in the top now robots used to be not intelligent not intelligent in the sense they 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 used to be having very minimal intelligence for example robotic arms which work on car manufacturing industries they would have been programmed to do only that stuff okay they they don't they don't they won't be able to think and do something else but now we are getting into a world where robots can think and do things themselves you must have heard about Ro sofia robot Have you heard Sophia robot? You know Sophia robot, right? You know who Sophia? Okay, Sophia, uh, the intelligent robot, which became so popular. I think even uh, uh, some government gave it in gave it uh, uh, some sort of uh, citizenship. Okay, after Sophia, so many robots came out. Okay, after Sophia, we had more advanced robots coming out after that. So, so we had robot. We have robots now who have conscience. okay we have conscience so so we are entering into a world again where robots will be a, a part of our life now now the robots are fantasy okay we are not seeing robots in our daily life okay we can see robots in some some places but robots are not in our daily life now currently now currently robots are like uh, for example robots are one in 800 okay for every 800 uh, humans in the world there is one robot that's the current uh, proportion actually okay it's a proven ratio but we are in another 50 years another 50 years the situations will change we'll we'll have one robot for eight humans okay the situation is increasingly like that Ro the robotic robot population keeps on increasing 
everywhere you'll you'll see some sort of robots coming up okay so all these robots are not just robots which uh, normal robots they will have intelligence okay like how we we saw transformers movie you have seen transformers movie right so how things are getting intelligence and they become into robots so everything will become some sort of robot even now now we have even the vacuum cleaner is a robot you have seen that right vacuum cleaner is not just a vacuum cleaner now vacuum cleaner is a robot okay because it moves around itself and do just things now we have servers okay uh, food serving food serving robots in restaurants even in chennai here in in many places you would have seen so robots are becoming a part of our life and in some time uh, we will be with them in, even in our home okay like how we see in movies so this is one and then the most important thing is iot okay internet of things uh the, the example he gave you about the mic is all of, it is a very good example of iot uh what we do generally in iot we generally uh, connect things to the cloud okay we connect things to the cloud and in the cloud uh, what what happens in things connecting to the cloud for example we have fridge you see here washing machines are there uh, there are mobile phones there are watches there are cars all these are connected to the cloud and what happens because of that when we connect things to the cloud they communicate i told you right the beginning they communicate for example you see this example see you see this refrigerator the work of a refrigerator is just to cool things isn't it that's what refrigerators were invented for but with the help of iot and the recent machine learning data science ai and all that these refrigerators can get some sort of intelligence so refrigerators are not going to be just refrigerators they are going to help you in 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 in, in terms like they will tell you what is available in the fridge okay there are only 10 eggs available 10 eggs available okay the milk is out of stock okay only this much is left you better order now so all this your refrigerator can tell you so this is iot okay you put sensors inside them and these sensors give the data and with the help of data your refrigerators take decision in advanced cases in advanced cases we can even connect refrigerators to our let's say big basket account or amazon account or swiggy uh, swiggy account so they can even place the orders themselves let's say the egg is out of stock they don't have to wait for us to order okay they can order for the let's say 10 10 eggs okay that can happen and this is a very good example of a, of a smart mirror mirrors are supposed to do only like show you and uh, it nicely but now with the help of in this iot and all that mirrors can act more than what they are supposed to act they can be your timekeeper they can be your task scheduler they can let you know about the weather updates so all this can be done with the help of iot and uh, the surrounding technology okay so and if you know about tesla cars right uh, there was an incident some time back okay uh, like four years back i guess where the self driving car the tesla car the one who was driving it he actually uh, had heart attack okay he had heart attack and he lied down on the seat now this car it identified okay it came to know my owner my driver has some sort of a problem and what happened and the car okay he laid down right so the car automatically searched for nearby hospital it searched automatically okay it searched automatically for nearby hospital and then took him to the hospital and he was saved okay now this this may look like more like a fantasy but it is, it is happening okay it is happening in the in the world we are living in now so things are not just things anymore they are they are they are acting like a companion now they they like friend your friends now okay and it's all happens because of iot and the surrounding technologies and next important thing on uh, industry 4.0 is cyber security a very important topic now cyber security is not just for technical people okay it's a topic every it it it, it has to be i mean uh, taught personally okay because uh, because hacking it, it has become more prevalent now i can show you something let me show you something you will be see you will be see having cyber security session anyway okay i think it is there is uh, i mean uh, it's uh, i mean is it uh, scheduled tomorrow i think it's scheduled tomorrow right yeah so let me show you something else once again i'll show you maybe okay one second let me show you something what's happening in the world now okay you can you can just search for uh, threat map maybe you can do that you can search for threat map and you'll see 
how many cyber attacks are happening every second okay let me show you okay so these are all cyber uh, uh, threat maps so cyber attacks are happening every map everywhere okay threat map protein is okay fortiga threat map okay so you see that so these are attacks uh, going from different countries into other countries uh it's cyber attacks used to be very normal uh, very rare okay let's say for like 10 years back but now they have become more prevalent okay and and cyber attacks don't think people won't attack me don't think people won't hack me don't think like that cyber attacks can happen to anyone okay it's it's about time everyone learns about cyber attack okay you can see attacks are going from us to europe uh, even within mongolia okay it, it can come to japan you see that so all these are happening now this is a uh, fortinets thing you can see different attacks going from different places okay more uh, attacks going from europe to us and even from china you can see a lot so what i'm coming to say here is cyber security is an in other important topic and maybe i can i can show you one more thing uh, i think there's time yeah uh, you can all uh, search uh, this thing have i been pawned okay this is very important i don't want to miss i want you don't want you to miss this you can go search go for this website have i been pawned.com okay and you can just input your email id you are using in your mobile phone everyone uses email id right there will be a primary email id in your mobile phone isn't it if you are using android mobile phone it works on google only basically right so everyone have a primary email id in your mobile phone isn't it you can just put a email id and check whether it has been hacked or not so for example if i put mine mine was hacked that actually <clears throat> so if i so if just search for it you can see come down my email id has been breached how many times five breaches you see there are five data breaches when was it happened when canva was attacked okay when canva was attacked my email id was breached and what was breached my email address came out my location came out my names came out my passwords came out my username came out don't worry i i changed the password and all that but this happened before okay after knowing this i changed it okay so even you should do that if you if you even if you put your email id and if it is showing some breaches better change your password and increase the two factor authentication and all that okay and all these things even linkedin was attacked in 2016 and even there my email address and passwords were leaked okay and okay so all these are some examples so the point is the point is uh, cyber attacks are happening to everyone and anyone you shouldn't think i am i'm not an important guy why should people attack me and all that we have important data personal to us everyone is using mobile phone everyone is using laptop no one is secure online okay no one is secure online so make sure you follow all the steps to be secure there are so many steps available maybe you'll have more on that tomorrow uh, so that is our cyber security and more importantly when it when it comes as a career when it comes as a career cyber security has a huge potential okay the reason the only reason being cyber security damages are more so people are ready to pay you highly uh, to prevent the damages on because of cyber crime you see here uh, by 2021 the cyber crime damage was 16.4 billion per day how much is it 1600 crores right 1600 crores dollars per day because of cyber crimes so this was in 2021 now it have been increased but so the, the point is people are ready to pay you more for cyber security related expertise so that is other thing you should uh, maybe you are all teachers right so you can you can uh, 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 encourage your students to take those courses and all that fine so these are all cyber security related uh, roles you can get and uh, you can see the five projected growth in different uh, things fine okay let's let me go to the next thing <clears throat> okay cloud computing other important uh, thing cloud computing is all about you know uh, having a centralized uh, place where you can store all the data and make use of it uh, for example uh, we used to go to doctors and doctor used to see us and that's how <clears throat> medicine used to be 
but now with health with, with cloud computing everything is like monitored uh, everything is like centralized okay so what we have is like uh, everything is connected so we have your doctor your family now even after, especially after corona uh, everything is online right even doctors were here attending the patients online so that's how cloud help and cloud company for education you would have heard uh, even this is happening online so this is a very good example and you have you have courses like udemy and we have courses in our place like in it expert training okay so everything is everything is like managed in a central place and people are able to access it and that's how cloud computing has enabled okay take getting information used to be very difficult cloud computing has made it really easy so uh, even this has a very good scope and this is a very good example we have netflix prime hotstar and all that uh, people used to you know like uh, uh, go to theaters now now the people are you know moving into this now the, the theaters are get, gaining i mean losing their interest so people are moving to this even the uh, the film owners are launching their movies and all this you, you know all this right so this is an entertainment and this is very important uh, storage okay now now when it, i was speaking speaking about hacking right now one of the ways to secure your data is to have a, a cloud backup okay a cloud backup is a very good example because when your system got hacked for example you, you know ransomware attack i know you have heard about it right ransomware attack ransomware attack is all about attacking your laptop and then they will ask you money to release your data and all that you heard about it you must have known all, known about it already now yeah so this ransomware attack if it happened that's it okay there's, there's no coming out okay you can only prevent it from happening okay if someone is attacked it that's it so before that what you can do and one of the things you can do is to have a backup in the cloud okay you can you can use you can choose google drive or dropbox you can choose very choose very important files and try to have a cloud backup okay or you can have uh, a separate uh, disk okay you can buy uh, a hard disk and then store them okay but having google drive backup is a, is another one but even that i can say it, it's secure because everything is hackable and it's like online okay so this is about cloud computing and additive manufacturing and the other name for this is 3d printing right 3d printing you know about 3d printing it's all about printing things uh, in 3d okay which means uh, whatever you think about designing uh, it can come out as a product okay for example if i design this in 3d in any software it can be printed then and there okay you don't have to wait you don't have to go to industry to do that people used to go to industry to print to manufacture something now the manufacturing has come to your homes you have a 3d printer at home that means you can manufacture things if you want to manufacture a shoe you can do that all you have to do is design it you, you learn you learn how to design you print your own shoes you know how to design you print your own jewels you print you know how to design you just know uh, you can just print your own watches watch straps or even specs so so manufacturing has moved from industries to homes now with the help of 3d printing and initially it was only toys and all that now we have bionics and all we have uh, you have all the bionics thing coming up in 3d printing and we have 3d printed houses now okay in china actually they printed 10 villas like this okay 10 villas like this in a single day in 24 hours in 24 hours they printed okay they printed 10 villas in 24 hours using large 3d printers like this okay it it even even in chennai recently there was a startup okay a few guys started a new company where they print 3d printed houses okay so it is this is another field it's coming up now and then robotics robotics is all about 3d printing now okay robotics all 3d printing uh, you you have open source designs now this inmove is open source design you can download this design 3d print it and you can you can have your own robot for yourself you can have an assistant and this uh, is this is very important and uh, 3d printing used to be only with plastic and all that now people are 3d printing with cells human cells okay what you are seeing here is a is a human cell used for printing the organs okay for example let's say you lose your lung okay your lung failure or kidney failure okay previously someone has to donate isn't it now with the help of stem cells 
stem cells uh, you know stem cells therapy and all that using stem cells the those cells can be used to print uh, whatever the lungs or liver with your own cells for you okay because a uh, stem cells can regenerate basically they can replicate so using those stem cells they can print your own for example let's say uh, you lose your nose let's say people used to fix plastic nose and all that right now they can print nose and fix it with your own cell now okay this is happening so this is 3d printing and medicine and augmented reality now this is also coming out in terms of business very important thing as in terms of business okay augmented reality is helping in many way and what is augmented reality augmented reality is combining digital world and physical world together what is virtual reality what what's virtual reality okay, can someone just Okay, I've been speaking for a long time. Let let me ask some questions. What is the virtual? What is virtual reality? Now, how, what we're seeing is augmented reality. Uh, virtual reality is uh, not exactly okay. It's three D basically, but basically what you are doing is you are projecting yourself into the digital world. Okay, you are moving. You are moving from physical world, which is a real world, into a digital world. Okay, you would have seen movies, right? Okay, for example, there's some movie called Ready Player One. Uh, there was a new movie, uh, new movie which came like one year back, which called Free Guy and all that. I hope you remember Free Guy something. Now, so where, what happens there? People are moving from physical world into digital world, and there is virtual reality where everything becomes digital totally. Augmented reality is a kind of different thing where phys- digital world is brought into physical world. It's a, it's the opposite one. Yeah, the digital world comes into physical world. For example, see here. let me show you this see <clears throat> now with with augmented reality people can learn this is this is about education people can have uh, animated things coming out of books like this okay if you just take a mobile phone and uh, there there are apps for this okay so if you just show the book uh, the the whatever is there in the book it will be shown as animated thing okay uh, there are apps for the for education and okay look at this so this is uh it will show you path it will show you path for example if you just show your phone you, you can see the camera on and in the camera itself it will show you the path for example let's say you're using google maps so google maps used to be only 2d right used to be only 2d generally now they have brought a 3d thing okay i think they released something called uh, google okay i don't i don't remember the name google what uh okay i'm not getting the name google Okay, I I don't I'm not getting the name. Okay, let, let's leave it. If someone knows, you know, you said where they have Google Maps and it shows the, uh, it shows you all the things in 3D and you can, not 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 street not street view not street view. It's different. Google, uh, Google not 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 Google Lens, not Google Lens. No no not not Google Lens. Not Google Lens. It's something else. Okay, I'll send you the group maybe later. So so basically, what happens is now this is actually what I'm speaking about. So in real world. your physical digital thing will come in and help you out okay this is one example I'll show you the path and all that for example if you look at the, if i show the camera to a hotel uh, yeah in, in in the hotel all the information of the, of the, about the hotel will come up for example what are the menus available in the hotel what is the review about the hotel and all that will come up in the app in the, in the camera itself okay that's a good example now look at this this is very good example where uh, usually people used to try uh, clothes right people is try clothes now you don't have to go to a uh, what to say what is what is the route, uh, uh, trial room you don't have to go to trial room and try thing you don't have to go to trial room okay trial room instead of trial room you will have mirrors that's it and in the mirror itself you will have option to select which cloth after selecting the cloth uh, you in the mirror itself you will see how the cloth will look like in view okay these are coming actually actually this is present in one of the uh, shops in tamil nadu i don't know which place it is i think kubavonam i'm not sure okay i think in kumbahoram there is a shop which has this thing i'm not sure but uh, i heard it so basically this is augmented reality where digital thing helps you in uh, augmented i mean helps you when doing things okay and this one is very where for example if you have, if you want to buy a furniture before buying the furniture you can have the look at the furniture uh, and see how it will fit in your hall or how will it fit in your room or something okay this is an example and this is medicine okay uh, before in medicine usually uh, people try or learn with real bodies right they they have real bodies and then try it 
but now with the help of augmented reality uh, people are trying with uh, digital things like this you don't have to try with real bodies now okay so things will come out pop out like this and they can easily learn in medicine using this or even if the patients have some problem they can easily see what problem it is using this kind of graphics okay they'll have some glasses and they'll see all this thing coming out so this is augmented reality and and simulation is all about you know like uh, you, have, you have simulation software available even that comes under that big data is all about what what's big data i'm not getting into it but just uh, for you big data is all about uh, taking the the massive amount of data which is available which is being created from your smartphones and all that and then making some uh, i mean organizing them organizing them and getting some meaningful data out of it okay using big data and machine learning and ai we can interpret visual data okay okay now now we know now we know about what the technology is available in industry 4.0 there are many more there are many more uh, uh, many more uh, technologies available uh, let's 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 uh, fix with this now now the question is the question is how can you prepare uh, for this technologies for example when i say prepare when i say prepare uh, there are two ways of preparing one is either you can be a user okay a user of these technologies or you can be uh, a creator or a developer of these technologies you can be either a user or a creator or a developer now when you want to become a user of technologies there's nothing like a preparation you don't have to prepare anything you can just make use of it even then you should uh, you should know something but when you want to create or develop these technologies what do you think you need to know uh to get into any one of these or uh, even all of this what is what is the one skill which is connecting all of them what is the one skill uh, a very primary skill which is connecting like most of these technologies not all but most of this maybe maybe all there is one technology one skill which is very important for these uh, technologies what is the skill now i'm asking a skill i'm asking a skill it's a skill it's a it's a personal skill or uh, it's a skill you are, logical thinking okay but that's general ai uh, how does all this come ai inter iot how do all this come there's one skill which is really primary which has become which has become essential skill it was a technical skill now it has become an essential skill for everyone what is the skill it is very important now uh, cloud self learning deep learning i'm asking a technical skill yes programming programming coding okay coding and programming okay it's coding skill or programming skill this is very important when i say when i say prepare for industry 4.0 uh, people might have might have been thinking uh, is there a set of things that i to, call on no 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 there's only one thing uh, primarily one thing you can do to prepare yourself for these technologies if you want to become developer or creator of these technologies you have to start with programming okay that's how things work for example okay, let me show you maybe okay you see this is it so this is it this is the only uh, this is the only preparation i i am giving you okay if you want to become a part of a technology creation or a development from your part all you have to do is uh, start programming start learning programming start teaching programming because uh, uh, students should should know programming now it's it's very important okay i told you right uh, personally hacking is happening so even for that at least people should know for analytical skills programming is needed okay to for general life you can use python you can use python for automating your own life you don't have to use python only for the business you don't have to use python only for the job you can use python for your own automation you you have routine things right you can use python to automate your routine things so programming language is is the only thing okay to start with if you want to get into industry 4.0 once you know this you can get into any of those technologies or even all of them even even 3d printing I, okay let me show you something i'll show you something see even 3d printing uh, a 3d designing can be done with programming i'll show you a software i generally use this it's called open scat okay okay maybe i can show you from uh, let me open it i will show you from here open scat can be used for designing 
things, 3D things in just matter of one or two lines. Okay, it's all about, you just give a command like cube uh, with a uh, cube with uh, this, you see this? Maybe I can show you some images for quick review. I use this, I use this personally for designing 3D. Okay, sometimes I use 3D print things. You can see here, all these are not designed in 3D. All these are designed using coding. Okay, they, see, you see the programming here on the left side, right? See, there's so much of coding here. Open SCAD is a good thing. It, it, it's easy. Okay, it's not difficult programming thing. It's easy. Even you can learn easily. Using that, you can create any shape you want to. Okay, I, I have personally used it for creating uh, uh, many things actually. You have, you, do you know what is flip names and all that? Do you know what flip names are? Have you ever bought it or seen it? Flip names? Have you ever seen in uh, Instagram or uh, uh, something where they have illusion names? They're called illusion names. Where one side will be like uh, one name, other side will be showing like another name. See this? Something like this. Have you seen this? No one? See, one side it is, it shows my name. Other side it says my, my wife's names. Have you seen this? Okay. Uh, no one? No, no one in this 400? Okay, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, I used to, you know, print this and sell. Basically, I used to sell this on Instagram. I used to, you know, design this. People, you know, I sell, I used to sell sometimes, not, not very rarely. It's like, it's like side business, okay? So I used to design this. It's all coding. See this? It's all coding here. It's all coding. I just change the names here. The names will change immediately. Okay, so, but now I'm not doing it. <laughs> There's no time for printing. I have 3D printer, but no time for doing this. So, so basically coding can be used uh, for, you know, like learning easily in different ways. Fine. So what was it saying? Okay, so let me switch to the window. So learn a programming language. And the main programming language is, now if you're new to programming, if you're new to programming, my advice is to start with Python. Because the reason being, the reason being, uh, there are two reasons, first of all. Uh, if you don't want to feel the difficulty in the initial level, go with, you should go with Python first of all, okay? If you don't want to feel the difficulty, okay? Second thing, uh, Python is growing, Python is growing. Third thing, Python is for many applications. You can see here, maybe one, two here, but uh, I, if, when I, in industry 4.0, the technology showed you, almost in all places you can use Python. Okay, it can be 3D printing or uh, IoT or cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is the main thing. Cybersecurity or cloud computing, I don't know what, what cloud computing, but cyber or other technologies. So wherever you go, you'll see Python. So at least you can learn the language and then uh, uh, choose what field you want to get into. Okay. So this, and by the way, oh, I'm sorry, all of you are like lecturers and teachers. So uh, you, you should encourage your students uh, to learn Python. So that is one thing. Or other languages are here. You can see the other language you should concentrate on JavaScript. JavaScript is, is highly growing. That's the other one which is really important, especially when it comes to uh, mobile app and web. Mobile app and web, JavaScript is on top. Okay. So uh, you can go with that. Uh, other things you can see different things are here and one more thing I just I, I, I uh, encourage students or even everyone to learn programming is not ju just because you can get jobs okay it's not just because you can get you can get jobs obviously but not just because of that the reason being uh, I want to uh, encourage people to learn programming is because uh, you if you have the skill of programming and coding you can become an entrepreneur. You don't, you don't have to depend on others. You don't have to wait for others to give you a job. Okay, well, for example, okay, let me let me just go through this. Okay, this top 10 skills in 2021, you see all those I-40 technologies here. And even these are same thing. Okay, the same thing again. Okay. Highly paying jobs also, the same thing. Okay, now come to this. Come to this. So you can see here about startups. Okay, very important thing. Startups are uh, being created like, like, like a second, like for every day there are four startups as per this data. Now it is more, okay? Every three, three there are three, four, star, four startups uh, every day being born, but now it's more. So how, why do you, how do you think people start something? How do you think people start something first of all? Okay, and these people who are starting things, they're not business people. They're, they're not business people. They are, they're students. 
they are students coming out of colleges how do they how do you think they start something how do they get the guts to start something how do they get the confidence to start something what do you think it's the main criteria behind it it's the only thing uh, the main thing i'll say is because they they have a skill especially programming okay technical skill basic Ex- exactly Progr- for example you t- you take all these companies now all these are top companies right okay there you see the value of all these companies now 25 billion 16 billion and when was this all this started are, are these 30 40 year old companies these are 30 40 year old companies they they started maybe 5 years 10 years back isn't it but who started this flipkart paytm byju's so all those were started because of by students who used to come out of college think of an idea sit together with the friends like six months one year even two years and after putting all those efforts in in programming and all that and developing a product it becomes a company you get the point so so the main skill that you need at this point of time even whether you want to go to a, go as a employee or you want to become as an entrepreneur for both of these things you need a programming skill you need a coding skill okay and even if you want to copy something even if you want to copy others work you need programming you, you take wola for example it's not like blaming him it is take wola for example wola is not a new idea wola is just a copy of uber not copy exactly but it's a idea is the replicate right uber was not in india this wola guy he knows we need it he is he knows there's something like uber in other countries so he sat with his friends he knows how to develop things and he he created it you get the point so even if you want to take others ideas and make similar to that again you need the skill so so with that with that i finish okay let me wind up with this uh, i have spoken more than one hour okay <laughs> let me finish with this uh, i hope the session was useful now I, i we can start with uh, yeah the program i mean the questions and all that so let me keep this maybe it might be a good uh, inspiration to you thank uh, you sir yeah. it was actually a very informative session on how to you know prepare yourself for industry 4.0 participants the floor is open to questions you can unmute and ask or you can put it in the chat box as well we will read it out thank you thank you so much people for all this uh, comments okay by the way if you want to go make use of uh, our websites i'll show you what uh, you can go to itexperttraining.com okay itexperttraining.com uh and you have free courses there you have free courses there and you can browse and all the courses will be like less it will be less surprise you can see this bundle it's a, it's a it's a 10 course bundle uh it covers python and iot and this is cyber security bundle which has 10 courses and all these will be priced at like uh, let me check like 500 i guess i think okay 190s that's it okay oh i think there's an offer going on so just 197 maybe you can go for this or even you can select you see this uh, maybe what is this okay so you're coming i'm sorry okay this python iot bundle is it has 10 courses yeah there are free courses available yeah there are free courses. you can i think python courses are available freely you can just i will just pass the link in the chat box maybe you can go uh, browse here still the free course available okay you can you can check there and uh, the other thing i want to tell you is uh, my, my, since you are all teachers and from different colleges uh, i go to different colleges and uh, give awareness sessions for free okay on nc 4.0 okay especially on nc 4.0 i i go to different colleges and free sessions even today uh, i'm happy to say that we had a uh, two day iot workshop then iot workshop in miyasi today and we had like 120 students uh, participating and uh, we had so much coming up so my mail id is uh, ilias at let me tell you 
Ilya's at fucking maybe I can use Notepad and send here. Show you here. Petroleum Infotech.com. Okay. So okay, this is it. You can you can um, we are always uh, free to I mean we give awareness sessions for free. Uh, we have covered almost like uh, I mean we we started only recently, like yes, not sir, the company. Okay. Ilya, sir, one question yeah. is there, I think, in chat box. Ah, so long. Have... Okay, okay, which language used for that name changing? That's called OpenSCAD, basically. You see that? Uh, it, OpenSCAD is the language. Uh, it's basically C. It's, basic, it's basically C. Okay, if you know C language, you can, you can understand this. There's nothing like what language it is. Yeah, it's it's basically see see generally generally uh, uh, people modify uh, the core languages into something else. For example, you must have known about Arduino, right? Uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi. If you take Arduino coding, Arduino is a form of C programming. Okay, it has come out of Arduino C programming, uh, but it's basically we call it Arduino programming. Okay, the commands will be simple, but at the end of the day, it will be C programming. So uh, so most of the programming you see now. Or most of the platforms you use now, use now, all those they'll be out of C, even even Python for that matter. Okay, sometimes in most of the, most of the Python packages at the back end you will see C plus plus. For example, there's a, there's a there's a uh, there's a package called TensorFlow. Okay, which used for machine learning, deep learning, all that. At the, at the outside at the outside you see Python, but uh, at the core it is actually C plus plus. Okay, so the so coding can be either one or a combination of many. How to start Python from scratch for ML? Okay, how to start Python from scratch for ML? We can start. We can start from maybe from my website. There's a free course available for just three hours. But what I would say, see, uh, uh, as okay, uh, this is for students as well as teachers. Generally, what people do is uh, they want to learn things completely and then start practicing. Okay, this is all what people think generally. They want to learn things completely and then practice things. Now this is not the right way. This is not the right way. You you should you can't learn everything and then start doing things. Start something very simple. Okay, start something very simple. Start with start. I mean, learn simple things, less things. Uh, immediately apply. Again, learn something. Apply. If, if you take my course here, okay. If you take my course here, this ten course bundle I showed you. All these courses are not more than two hours. I tell you. All these courses are not more than two hours, two two and a half max. But I have covered ten applications here. Uh, the reason being, uh, I don't want to. Uh, no, this is how you should do. Don't don't keep. Uh, okay, don't keep uh, learning. Okay, uh, learn simple, apply it again. Learn something, apply it. So that's how we should do, and that's how things work in real world. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anything else you want to show? Okay, my number maybe nine one nine double eight four six four eight. You can WhatsApp me. Okay, please tell us the interesting. Okay, dear sir, uh, due to high automation in jobs, any cause of decline of manpower? See, uh, when when you say decline of manpower, obviously there will be. Okay, it's inevitable. Okay, manpower or decline or labor reducing labor thing is it's it's inevitable. You can't you can't avoid it. It's going to happen. It's happening already. The thing is, we have to prepare the generation not for manual work but for automatic work. You have to, you have to, you have to raise the generation technically. Okay. In, in terms of, for example, if you take cyber security, if you take cyber security in India itself, there are twenty million openings which will be available at the end of this era. You know, almost twenty million, right? Uh, there was there was a news I read uh, uh, I, I I heard in like uh, four a month back the news it was saying every police station in the country will have a cyber security expert. You 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 hear it? The the news is about every police station in the country will have a cyber security expert. So so it's not like uh, the jobs are going down. It's like switching from one job to another job. Okay, so you have to prepare uh, accordingly. Okay, yeah. Which one is good? R versus Python. 
okay you can go with r if you want to only work on statistics and data analytics and stop there but if you want to get into more of uh, for example nlp deep learning and all that then you should go with python okay r is okay for statistics r is good for statistics basically statistics alone data analytics you stop with that fine but if you want to go beyond it machine learning llp computer vision uh, there are many applications right if you want to get into all those things you sh you should go with python okay but but i my advice is uh, python is good if you are going to start okay what is the other question okay thanks thank you for the uh, uh, feedbacks people really really i'm really happy at the feedbacks and was there any other question i missed is there any question i missed please tell us the interesting area in machine learning okay if you want to get into uh, interesting area machine learning deep learning go for nlp and computer vision okay there are, i am seeing many products coming up in computer vision especially okay even last month we went for a pitching thing with uh, you know idea patrai do you know do you guys know what idea patrai is uh, you, you know suresh sambandham sir i have many of you must be knowing it suresh sambandham who is he no ham most of you may know him right he is a ceo of uh, this uh, kiss flow okay suresh sambandham sir he is he is running a thing idea patrai uh, where we can pitch ideas and do things so even we have went for some pitching things pitching session and all that and uh, i i i there was another company which uh, yeah there was very uh, another company which uh, which introduced a computer vision product uh, no one would have thought about it see no no what they did was they use com they use computer vision okay with machine learning and ai to get a uh, value out of non buying customers you hear the word okay non buying the, the the computer vision the technology what it does is it identifies all those people who are entering into a supermarket but not buying okay it it targets them we don't usually bind up with them is it but see these people they are using the technology to target those people now and it has become a very good product now it is it is like it is a boon for uh, in uh, businesses i guess especially supermarkets okay how to uh, you know like uh, make use of non buying customers so that is it yeah Okay. Shamia ma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think there are uh, no more questions, sir. I think can we go ahead with the next proceedings? Participants, the feedback form link will be put only in uh, this. Ah, management, Mia, C, ah, ma'am, Devi, ma'am, and okay. Thanks, thanks for the feedback, uh, everyone. Thanks for attending. uh thanks for the opportunity ma'am and uh, the whole me as a team uh, it's a good yeah. the good thing that you are arranging all this uh, we'll be we'll be really happy to be part of in everything that's coming up thanks thanks, thanks uh, uh, thank you yes sir your session was very excellent <laughs> thank you thank you sir thank you sir <laughs> thank you ma'am thank, thank you thank you sir for giving a lot of insights participants the feedback link will be posted only on the zoom chat and on the youtube live chat it will not be posted in the group and uh, kindly fill the feedback forms after only upon filling all the five day feedback form you'll be getting the e certificates so moving forward to place our gratitude i call upon dr hasina assistant professor miasi institute of information technology assalam alaikum and a very good evening to everyone present here on behalf of miasi institute of information technology i would like to propose vote of thanks first of all i thank our management for encouraging in conducting this ftp program i i also would like to thank our honorable secretary janab ilias said executive committee members of mit convener of mit director and head of the department for the support and giving this wonderful opportunity i place my sincere gratitude to our speaker of the day mr mohammad ilias for making excellent presentation and engaging us throughout i am sure your insights on how to prepare for industry 4.0 has been very useful and informative for our participants thank you sir 
I also thank all the professors and participants from various colleges and universities across India for taking their valuable time and ensuring their presence here. I extend a heartfelt thanks to our organizing team and non-teaching staff for all the support. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, thanks, ma'am, for the thing. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, thank you, Williams. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, thank sir. Thank thanks, sir. Thanks, thanks, sir. Yeah. Salaam alaikum. So shall, shall we wait for five more minutes? Twenty. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So eight fifteen, we'll just the session. The participants before eight fifteen, all of you fill the feedback form. The recording stop when you're done, sir. Yeah, yeah. We we will stop. Uh, how's the recording stop when you're done? I'll stop the live. Uh, YouTube layon close panel lana ne. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes.